We're here with Chuck Barfoot from Barfoot Snowboards, and Chuck, welcome to Park City. Thank you. <laughs> Great to have you here. Now tell us about 20 years in the snowboard business, and you've got the 20th anniversary board right here. Tell us about it. Okay, well this year is our, uh, it's a special year for us. Uh, I started building boards actually real close to here. Uh, my first uh, boards were built in 1978, and uh, my first time riding was actually at entry three over by snow between Snowbird and Alta. And uh, so anyway, I always come back to Utah. There's always great snow here. Special place in your heart because of that first ride, right? Always a special place <laughs> in my heart. <laughs> now, I, I want to hear about the beginnings because it's quite an amazing story. I know you have a history of surfing actually that started this whole thing, right? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I've been in sports my whole life. I started surfing in 1961. I'm originally from New Jersey and uh, moved out to California in 1970. And I've been involved with skateboards and of course I still surf. I'm 46 years old now and I'm still surfing. I live right on the beach. So I s snowboard during the winter time. I surf for the rest of the year. I sk still skateboard a little bit. But uh, what got me into this was just being a surfer. Um, when we started making snowboards, there was only a couple people making any boards whatsoever. Um, the actual, the best board out at the time was the Winter Stick by Dmitry Miklovich, who's from this area. Actually, he's from New Jersey also. Really? And so is Sims and Burton's from Vermont. So most of the guys who started this industry are from the East Coast, but they all moved out west, which is kind of a unique deal. But uh, anyway, I was working at Sims making skateboards for some of the top pros in the world. And um, a fellow by the name of Bob Weber came to Sims with a yellow plastic, kind of a toy board with a skateboard deck on the top of it and wanted uh, Sims to uh, license the name. So they did that and then I looked at that and I hadn't snowboarded yet and I kind of rigged up a binding system with a rubber strap on it. And Tom asked me to start making some fiberglass boards and since I made sur uh, surfboards and worked with fiberglass and stuff like that, he um, let me cut loose on that. So I started making a board in the summer of 1978 for Tom, it was his own shape. Halfway through it, I said, you know, I got to do my own designs on this thing. This, you know, I can make a, a more functional board. So I came up with a design, uh, taught myself how to make my own molds, and made these solid fiberglass um, snowboards with all the contours in them. Every one of them was unique. But what was really weird was is when I went and tested my first board um, at, in, uh, over by uh, Snowbird, excuse me, I realized that I had never even snowboarded before. That's amazing. And from what I hear, it was a pretty good first run. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and what was weird, we were showing pictures of, uh, you know, I was standing there and I'm like all stoked and everything. I saw that. You saw the picture. It yeah. Yeah. It's hysterical. And I looked, and I went, holy moly, you know, it was my, my first toe turn and my fo first heel turn ever. Um, and I designed a board without even having, having ever ridden before. And it worked great and been just hooked ever since. And, That's amazing. Yeah. Now, you mentioned all the guys coming out from back east. Did it really start taking off bigger and better in the west to begin with? Well, the origination of it was more from the east coast. Uh, Sherman Poppin in 1962 designed a board called the Snurfer in Michigan. And uh, what's really funny about that is in 1962, or during the summer, um, I went to Michigan, one of the only times I've ever gone to Michigan. My cousin lives out there, and we rode a snurfer on the sand. Hmm. And then I hadn't even stuck my foot on anything until 1978. So years had passed, but that's where it originated from. Burton was doing uh, basically a copy of the snurfer, and so was a, a flight a company called Flight out of uh, Rhode Island, and the fellow's name was Stevie Dura, and that was 1977. Wow. So come a long way since then. It's come a real long And since those early days, are you surprised with how much snowboarding has taken off, especially the past few years? Absolutely. I mean, to see mountains, figure when we started, you weren't allowed to even right. ride on a mountain. Uh, it took us four or five years before we started to be allowed to, around 81, 82. Now, I mean, 40 to 60 percent of any mountain on any given day is snowboarders, which is incredible. So I never expected it. Okay, let's talk about the difference in the attitude over the past few years and the tolerance that skiers have so much more for snowboarders and so many are trying out snowboarding more and more. 
Well, like I said, the, the very uh, beginning of snowboarding, most of the people who rode were skateboarders and they were more rebellious. And uh, that has changed over the course of the years. I mean, my company, for instance, I have friends of mine who ski, um, we snowboard and ski and we get on the same chair lift and we have a great time. It's not like there's a difference, it's just we ride differently. Uh, back then, skiers were giving up ground because there were no snowboarders and all of a sudden they had to put up with people who were going across the hill more. There were just little things that people had to learn to kind of give a little bit. We've all been schooled enough now that we're all out here to have fun. And I mean, I love snowboarding with skiers and I always get a kick out of somebody who has an attitude towards me because I just, you know, I'll just laugh and just go, oh, I like skiers, sorry. And rip <laughs> right on by, yeah. <laughs> I just make sure they see a couple of good runs, you know, and that's it, and see you. <laughs> but you definitely encourage everyone to get out there and try a snowboard, right? Most people, yeah. I mean, unless you have some kind of an injury or something that doesn't allow you, but other than that, snowboarding's a blast. It's a little harder to learn than skiing. Uh, the learning scale for skiing is like first day, you've got it pretty together, you can get down the hill on skis, it's pretty easy. But by the end of the week, you really haven't learned much. Snowboarding, the, it's hard the first day. You usually get some bumps and bruises. I recommend <laughs> lessons. A little padding in the behind maybe, right? <laughs> An extra padding in the behind. <laughs> but uh, by the end of the week, if you've stuck with it, you're actually riding pretty decently. And uh, it's just a matter of time. You put more time in, you get better. And from what I hear, those powder runs make it all worthwhile, right? And if you get the ride powder, there's nothing better. Okay. Absolutely. All right, now back to the 20 years here and the anniversary board. Tell okay. us what this means. I know there's a, a special little symbolism there at the bottom of the board. Okay, well, um, this was a graphic brought up by a friend of mine. Of course, it's our 20th year anniversary. We wanted to celebrate it. And I asked uh, my artist friend to uh, come up with something that he thought would be special. So he kind of made my logo, which is a claw coming out of a pool of gold. And then we uh, put the 20th anniversary and it's also a collector's edition. So what I'm doing this year is I make every single model of board we make, you can get this graphic on it if you happen to want one of them. And then the bottom's got a nice... All right. I don't know if you can see that real well, but... It's beautiful. Yeah, it's a very, very, very nice board. All right, well, a very exciting 20 years and what do you have planned for the next 20? Hopefully be riding my behind off like I'm still doing and staying healthy and just having, you know, our company move along. I'm, I'm enjoying doing something that I love for a living. And, uh, you know, I don't think you could ask for anything more. You know, we're living, we're living a lifestyle and it's paying the rent. That's the mm -hmm. nice thing, you know. Beautiful thing. And enjoying the beautiful outdoors like here today. Oh, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Chuck, and we wish you the best of luck. My pleasure. I'm Jillian Cahill for Park City Television.